Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to share a little bit of a project I'm working on. So I'm building basically a precision spool holder for the Tron XE X5S. And I'll do another episode on that. However, in designing the actual holder to attach to the printer, um, I sketched a few things out. I actually, on paper, did some rough measurements on the Tron XE. And then what I did is I came into Inkscape and actually started laying out the project. Now, what I've done in Inkscape is I've set up a couple different layers. Now, I've covered this out a little bit in prior episodes of how to use different layers in Inkscape. Uh, but I just thought it kind of worthwhile to go back to do kind of a little bit of a refresher and to show you guys a little bit how I use this to create different layers, if you will, that I'm going to extrude in Tinkercad. So, long story short, I've got my two layers here because basically I want to have a bottom layer which if I turn off the top layer over here, uh, you notice this is my bottom layer. So I've got it selected here. Uh, well, actually, I turned back on the top layer, sorry. So I've got my bottom layer here, and I want to pass through for the bolt here. I want my opening here. And then what I've done is over here, I've laid out the width of my maker rail. So these bolts will be the pass-through diameter for the uh, T-bolts that's going to go through and hold this onto the Tron XE. Now, I've used this general outline to actually create the top layer, too, which will be another thinner layer. And one of the things to notice that I've colored each layer a different color. And one of the things to help me keep it straight, if you notice over here, I've also added the color to the layer name, so top and bottom, which is pretty simple here. I've called it red and blue. So as I'm working on the model, I, I can keep track of, you know, am I working on the top or if I'm working on the bottom by the color. And if I happen to come back to it, then again, I can refresh my mind on the color. And most of the times I kind of keep the color the same, but for tops and bottoms. And, and most of the time it's usually only two layers. But if you get into more layers, this really comes into handy. So anyways, a little bit of tip there. So now that I have this, what I, what I do is I export both of these layers separately. And if you turn off... Uh, the layer and then you go up here to file and then you do save a copy uh, or save as which it's better to actually do save a copy because if you do save as then it's going to switch to that new copy which will only be a single uh, copy uh, so you do save as copy and then what happens is you simply go back and then you turn on top and then you turn off the bottom and do the same now once you've done that you can go into Tinkercad and here you go. So I've already imported these and saved you the time. I've done that in another video, so you can go back in the Inkscape, Inkscape tutorial playlist and see how I do that. You just simply go up here to import, and you import the SVG, and you make sure your files are the correct size. So now that I have these in, what I've done is I've taken my top layer here and determined the thickness, extruded the thickness, and then also notice how far up I am. So my bottom is about three millimeters thick. Now, one of the things I made my bottom a little bit bigger uh, than three millimeters because I wanted to be able to join with this, but I want to have three millimeters of thickness uh, for the bottom plate so my T nuts, you know, mate correctly. So then, long story short, since I have this like this, what I can do is I just now highlight all this, and I use uh, my favorite tool, which is the align. And then I just bring these guys together, and then boom, and then I just hit hit them and join them. And now I've got my uh, part. Let's turn it orange. I like orange better. Uh, there might be a little bit of a line here because for some reason Tinkercad sometimes doesn't get perfect, but it shows up. It uh, actually prints as one solid unit without the line. So... Um, that's not an issue. So anyways, if you're working on something like this where you have multi-layers or multiple layers, um, this is an easy way to actually go about and do it. And, and one of the things, you, you could do something like this in um, Fusion 360, but one of the things I like about using Inkscape and then extruding in, in Tinkercad is sort of the ease. I basically only use Tinkercad, or primarily use Tinkercad in this case to extrude 
and to combine to export to an, an STL. So my design work is really happening in Inkscape. And, and I like this because I do a lot of my CNC work in Inkscape. I do a lot of my laser cutting work in Inkscape. And so it, it's kind of a universal tool. And you could kind of do that in, in Fusion 360, but it's just I've become so you know accustomed to this. And it's uh, pretty handy to be able to work in. So. Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, also, don't forget the subscribe button's coming over there. Swag Shop's up in the corner. And, uh, hey, if you got any Inkscape ticks or ticks, ticks, that doesn't sound right. That's not right. Tips or tricks, please hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you guys, too. Cheers, and see you guys in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.